Hello, welcome to Board Games with Niramas. I'm Joseph and I'm here today with Draco to play a two-player game of Fallout. This game from Fantasy Flight Games is uh, something I'm really excited for. Uh, it's really interesting. I've been playing a bit, uh, learning the rules and so on, and now I'm going to show you together with Draco here how a two-player ga game could run. So, well, let's get started. Uh, just uh, dwell into this wasteland. <laughs> Down here, a lot of the tiles are covered. We don't know what's under them. We're going to explore and find out as we go. Um, I'm going to be the Brotherhood of Steel guy. He's a, I think he's a former, you know, this character, yeah, he's an outcast. So, um, it's my favorite faction from the computer games. Draco wanted to be a super mutant <laughs> with the sledge, the, what, what's it called? The sledgehammer, uh, really cool stuff. And so we each uh, have our boards here. Uh, so here's my board. I start with an I in the special, so I have some intelligence at least. And then I will uh, work my way up here by leveling up. I will get more and more of these. Uh, and these will help me in fights and tests and so on by me giving me rerolls basically. I have my rats over here. It starts on zero and my health starts on 16. If they ever meet, then my character instantly dies or sort of he gets he gets wounded enough that he loses all his items that he has down here you can have three different items here uh the equipped stuff stays you can have an armor you can have something in your hand a weapon and you can have a companion they stay with you even if you get badly hurt and need to and you also need to go back to the crossroad camp where we start out uh what happens after that if we would die is that the health goes up to maximum again but the rads, they stay wherever they were, and if the rads ever hit 16, then you, you're dead, you're out of the game. But I, I don't think that happens that much. So anyway, and there's a way to lower the rads as well, this is Radix, of course. So, um, that's my board, and I'm the first player, which means I will have this uh, deck here of agendas that I start with here, and I will explain how that goes. I'll start with three bottle caps, this is once, really cool stuff. Um, and we have over here, we have the market, where you can buy items and so on. Draco has the same setup here, of course. Uh, his special ability, by the way, I have, I because I'm the Brotherhood guy, I start with the power armor, of course. So I have some protection here, I can take two, I can remove two damage or two hits on me. And I have an item equipped there, I have an armor. Draco doesn't have any equipment, but instead, since he's a super mutant, he has a special ability that... Uh, this card doesn't take any space either, and he has a special ability that when he takes red, he gets experience. <laughs> because he's a super mutant, and he's strong as well, he has the S there. So that's uh, Draco. And then we have a bunch of different stuff out here, enemies and so on. We have a scenario here that there's four different to start off. I think there will be expansion for this game, there's been a lot of talk about it already. Uh, so in the first, uh, here we're in the Commonwealth. And the two factions, there's always two factions out that are going to battle each other and we can sort of choose side in some cases. And the two first here is the Railroad and the Institute that you recognize from Fallout 4, of course, the big battle there. Where I actually chose to be, I, I, I went against both of these guys and I was with the Brotherhood. <laughs> you could go so many different ways there. So, and we have the map, some of the tiles are open, we have some enemies out here, here's the Super Mutant Brute. Uh, we have a uh, center bot over here, and also this is an enemy as well, and in this game, this represents the Institute, so the Institute has uh, one soldier out here that will also interact with us in different ways. So, well, let's get started. The first thing that happens is we're going to get one agenda each, and these are, uh, we get them face down, they're hidden from the other player. And if we take a look at them, take a look at mine, here I am, uh, I'm going for freedom, which means that uh, to win the game, in a two-player game, you need 10 uh, thumbs up, you need 10 points, uh, fame or whatever it's called. Um, and I have this for each base that the star, which is the um, the, uh, the railroad, has advanced farther than than the shield, which is the institute. So I'm, I'm on the side of the railroad here. I want them to move up here on the track, become po more powerful than the institute. If any of them gets down here, though, the game ends. And they might win if I haven't collected my 10 points by them. So that's a way for me to get points. And at the start of your turn, I can reveal this card to declare I'm loyal to the uh, railroad. 
If I do, that means that the railroad guys out on the map, there's none at the start, but they might be later, they won't attack me, they won't go after me. Um, yeah, so, but I have this hidden right now. I can choose to reveal it later on if I want to declare loyalty. Draco, on the other hand, oh, he got the same one. Oh, that's a bit boring. Okay, so he has the same one, but we don't know what the, what the other one has. So right now we are both in interest to uh, sort of work for the railroad and have them get more influence over here than the Institute. And anyway, this is an uh, indication of being the first player. I have this, which means that when we have done our stuff, then the monsters are going to do something. So first of all, it's my turn. And I can do two, two actions. Um, I could move, I could explore, I can attack someone in my space. I can do a uh, encounter action if I'm in, in a city sort of, or in some uh, wasteland space where there is that symbol. Uh, there's two different there. Also the decks over there, either the uh, encounter in the wasteland or in a, a, co a compound or in a, well, what's it called? Yeah, like a, like a city remnants. We also start this mission, or uh, this uh, this uh, scenario with one quest here. Welcome to the Commonwealth, where uh, I will read for you a bit. Uh, we, we um, well, many dangers lurk in this new wasteland ahead of you, but the one you have heard the most about is the dreaded synth. Said to look, sound and smell just like humans, they are robots who are, have infiltrated the very society of the Commonwealth. And now we... Either of us can do either this or this. We can either go for killing a suspected synth that no one will miss to find out the truth. We can kill any human that's the skull there. Or we could go to Diamond City. This all sounds a bit overblown. Head to Diamond City to discreetly dig up some information. And that symbol there means that we do a quest action in Diamond City. And uh, we get different results. If we do go to Diamond City and do it, that will benefit the railroad. And we both want to do that, right? So. Then we get some loot, we get some new cars going on and so on. So that's the quest that it's on the table right now. There's going to be more as we go. And anyone can do them. Okay, so... Um, yeah, I think, well, I wanna head I think I want to head over to Diamond City then. So let's start with doing one explore action. So I'll explore this time here. To do that, I have to be, as you can see, there's different uh, lines here. So there's different areas in, in that tile. And I have to be adjacent to the tile that I want to explore, which I am, so... And then we align it with the arrow there, upwards, and we have a raider camp. So there's going to be a raider here as well. There we go. And it's a looter. He has a strength of one, so he's a pretty small, small time guy. So that was one action for me. I think I will move, but since I have the power armor, I can only move one space. Normally you move two spaces when you move. Or you gain movement points, it's just like Imperial Assault or something, where you get movement points, you can move and then do stuff and then keep moving. Uh, but anyway, I can only move one place, one space with my power armor because it's heavy, unless I pay a nuke call. I will do that, so I can move two spaces. I will go into this, I will go to this looter guy. Hello. I can't fight him now. I had used my two actions, so now it's Draco's turn. Draco will, um... I mean, Draco doesn't know that I want to go to Diamond City, but he wants to hurry to get there. He wants to do this quest, so I think he will go one, and then he will explore. And now, remember, he still has a movement point left. And there's some rads there. And also one of these... Uh, oh, a rad scorpion comes up. Okay. So he's out here. So Draco has one movement point left, and he will move into this rad area. Now, when he does that, he will take a rad. Um, which normally isn't good, but remember, because he's a super mutant, he gets an XP as well. So he moves it to below the letter that he has there. Once the next time he gets an XP, it will go back here and he will level up. So if he will get a new letter, or if he gets the same letter, he will get a perk. But we'll, we'll see how that goes as we get there. So that was Draco's turn. He moved, explored, and then moved again. And now it's time for the enemies. And since I'm the first player, I will draw from the per, uh, agenda deck and we'll take a look down here. Now we don't care about the text up here, we just look at the text or the symbols down here. So that indicates that the Institute will move or act, it will activate, and they will move towards us to the closest player. So he, this is the soldier there, moves towards us. Uh, then the uh, Death Clause will move, activate. Well, there's no Death Clause here, thankfully. And then the creatures will move. And so there is a creature right here, the Red Scorpion. He will move into Draco's base. 
so he's already there. <clears throat> so, um, yeah, it's time for the second uh, round. It goes really fast like this, uh, really smooth game. And it's my turn, and I'm going to attack this looter because I want some XP. You get, I will get one XP if I beat him. He's level one. Uh, to hit him, I need to hit his legs. So uh, let's see if I can do that. So when I attack him, uh, no, actually, let's. I forgot something here. Right away, it's suicide to do. This red scorpion has a little symbol there, a little uh, uh, lightning arrow. That means he's aggressive. He would have attacked Draco right away as he came in here into his space. Normally they would don't do that, they just move in, but he will attack right away. And that doesn't, that's not an action because we're on the enemy's uh, activation, so Draco gets to fight him for free basically. He has a uh, level 1, he needs to be hit in the arms or the legs, sort of, well he's a scorpion, but anyway. So his Draco, Draco hits him in the chest, in the arms and in the head, or was it? Uh, so basically, uh, this one will is a hit because that's in the arms and he, you can see there that we can hit him in the arms So he's dead. It only takes one then he will hit Draco back and that's then we count the little stars here So we have one two three Draco will take three hits, but he kills this uh, red scorpion and um, Let's see so Draco takes three hits first of all Down to 13 and then he kills this one, so he gets an XP, so that's not bad. And let's see, when he gets an XP now, because he got one from the reds as well. So now he will jump all the way over here and to the left, over there, and now he levels up. And he will get to randomly just draw uh, two things here. Like that. So Draco got, what is it? A P and an I, okay. And then he gets to choose one of them. And um, now Draco doesn't have any weapon or anything, but if he had a weapon, it would have a letter or more letters on it, and then he would choose depending on that. They just take the P here. Perception, why not? All right, so that was his leveling up, and he got the he got the experience, he took the hit, he killed the enemy, and the enemy, as we can see here, he only has this arrow means that if Draco didn't kill him, he would just go inactive for now. But, and he's aggressive, but he doesn't get any more, some of them have loot and so on that you get if you kill them. But Draco killed that one, that's it. But when an enemy is killed, then you take another one from the same type, which is this one, and you just put it like that in the closest space where there should be a spawning one. And that one is inactive, that won't activate until the next time we pull out a card and it's the bug symbol of the creatures he will flip over instead of moving. It's sort of like you repopulate the map with new enemies. Yeah. Okay, so that was the enemy phase. Now it's time for my turn and I will attack this looter. So let's see if I can hit him in the legs. And I did. These two hits him in the legs. But this was not a good roll because, okay, so the looter is dead, right? He only has one uh, health. And that's those two, but now he will hit me back, and that's one, two, three, four, five hits. Wow, that is really rough. Um, the thing is, my power armor will block two of those hits, which means that, and the, the way you count this is now this is a level one, so every of those markers means one damage. If this was a level two, or like this guy, the super mutant, he's level three, that would be what, 15 health? Yeah. <laughs> so, so, uh, so well, that's blocked, I'll take three hits, nothing I can do about it. Now, I, if I had a weapon and so on, or the right equipment, I could perhaps reroll, try to minimize the damage taken. But that's how it happens. Now I also get one experience point, and I get a loot. So, let's take the experience point first. And this jumps all the way over to my eye then, because it goes under whatever I have here. And the next time I get an experience point, I will level up. Uh, and also get a loot, so we have a loot deck over here, and I find a pipe wrench, alright, and this one has an S, I don't have the S though, uh, but this is a weapon, I will use it of course, if I had the S here marked in, and this one has an S, that means when I fight, I get a reroll, and this is during a fight, if you spend a head result, well, with a head and a one hit, discard this card, okay, so I will have this one until I hit someone in the head with it, and then it will be gone. 
Okay, so that was my turn. Uh, well, my first action. I took out that guy. Now, I'm in a raider camp. And by the way, we should spawn a new enemy here as well. He will be inactive though, so he's still here. And that means when he's inactive, he doesn't block me. If he's active, I can't do stuff in the, in the same space. I can't rest. Uh, you can rest, by the way, or camp as it's called. Uh, but you can't do that if you have an enemy there. You can't do an encounter, a quest, and so on. But he doesn't count because he is inactive. And now I will do an encounter for the wasteland. So Draco will pull out this. Now I will help him because he's a little dragon pawns, you know. But normally if you play with human uh, players, then the player to your right will take out this card. He will read it. I will do it like this uh, because you don't want to see what's under there. So you will read it and then you will look at the different options you have here. Like that, something. And you don't want to see what, what happens when you choose the option. So if you play solo, you do the same as I'm doing now. But if you have a human players next to you, then they can help you out. Okay, so you approach a section of the structure that doesn't show much loot or activity. And you wonder why it's been avoided until you hear the scuffling. So I can rush in and kill the critters. I can send them after someone else. That takes an adjacent survivor. Now, Dark isn't adjacent to me. Otherwise, I could send them after him. <laughs> that would be fun. Or I can grab something and run. Well, you know what? I'm, I've been in the Brotherhood. I'm a cool guy. I just got a pipe wrench weapon. I'm going to rush in and kill him. Okay. So I step into the den and I get ready to clear out the creatures for the good of everyone. So I will draw and fight a... Um, uh, what's it called? A, a creature. And it turns out it was Sting Wings. Okay. Uh, they are level 2, so they are a bit tougher than the other one I was fighting earlier. So I'm fighting that guy. Well, let's see, he needs to be hit in the body or the head. So there's some head hit, but that's the hit. If I use this one, then I lose my pipe wrench. But I can use these two. I can use these two because that's body on both of them. So that's okay. Um, so he's killed. I had two hits. He had two life. I kill him. And now uh, he will hit me for one, two, three, four back, but I can remove two because of my armor. That's two left and that's times two, so I'll take four hits to my dam to my health. So as you can see, you get down on your health pretty fast here. You need to do some camping and rest and you get three health left back. You need to find some steam packs and all that stuff. And also while I'm down here by the way, I do get I also get um I also get two experience. So because it's a level two. So I'll go one and then I'll level up, take two of these, just random, and I got an E or an A. Uh, let's take E, Endurance, and then I get another experience, so I land there. Okay. And um, yes, more of, the more I can get of these, the better it is, of course, in the long run. Also, um, after I fought them, uh, let's see, I will get loot. Uh, times the number on the place I'm at. All of this is a bit fiddly in the beginning, but you get into it. Um, so I'm at the raider camp, which has a three. I'll get three loot. So let's do that. One, two, three. So I got myself some um, Tesla Science. Uh, that's a, a paper, newspaper or paper. When you camp, that's resting. If you do not have an eye, I do have an eye. I could have discarded this to gain 2 XP. Ah, oh, it's not that good. It's, it, it's useless for me then. But I can sell it for 2, anyway, the value. Oh, I find a companion, Hancock. Ah, oh, he's cool. Exhaust to move an enemy within 2 spaces of you into your space and fight it. If that enemy is not killed during that fight, discard this card. And if uh, exhaust is just like that, tapping it. And when I rest, I can unexhaust it. But if I do and I don't have a P, which I don't, then I will lose him. Okay, so basically I can, he's like, I can pull in enemies to me. And then I got a laser rifle. Oh, that's cool. That's an I and an A, and I do have the I. During a fight, for each uh, dam more, uh, hit that causes you to suffer damage, you may spend a cap if you do not discard this card. Okay, well, it's good anyway. You know what I'm going to do? Because I can have four items, uh, three items in my backpack, and then I can have equipped stuff. I will equip this uh, laser rifle for now. And since it has an eye on it, and I have the eye, the intelligence, when I uh, fight something, I can do one reroll of uh, any, any, any number of dice. Uh, he, Hancock, will be my companion, and I will keep this to just to sell it later on. 
So there we go. And then we have one more thing to do here, or two more things. First of all, we, I'm going to become idolized. <laughs> because I was brave, I rushed in and beat those um, creatures in there. Now I am idolized. And I'll put this here, there's a spot for everything, which is nice. And from now on, if I do another quest or something happens, an encounter, it might say that because I'm idolized, I have to do a certain thing, like I, I'm expected to help the weak or whatever. Uh, also, if I, for some reason, do something bad, I might get vilified, I'll turn this over. And you can only be either one of them at the same time, of course. Some of these companions will only follow you around if you're one or the other. Okay, so that was it uh, for that, and finally, we're going to add 004. And how that works is, uh, it was a bit tricky for me at first, uh, because the rules are a bit vague, I think, on this, but what it means is we have a, we have a huge deck over here. And uh, this is a bit weird because I sleeved some of them and not all of them, so it looks weird. But I have a deck here from 1 to 100 and... 60 uh, with the cards. This is the game basically what happens in the game. Now I'm going to pull out 004 and look at the back and it has a wasteland symbol on the back and that means that I will look at the I will take uh, the number of players which is two. I will take two cards from here from the encounter deck with the wasteland. I will shuffle this in like this so I'm not sure when it will come up basically that and I'll put it on the top so I know that something happened because of my encounter because I beat those bugs I don't know what it is I don't know when it will come up we'll have to search and find it and here is actually one my one complaint with this game basically is the thematic connect because now Draco could be over here he could do a search and find that card and resolve whatever happened after I mean I think that's a bit weird because when you play multiplayer because it should be me it should be dedicated to me I think but anyway that's how they chosen to do it I think it's okay. Um, I will play this game mostly solo anyway. So, and finally, it says trash on this card that I was just uh, met. So this card is out of the game. Uh, it won't come up again. We won't have the same encounter once once more. So that was my whole encounter thing. First, I beat. Let's see. First, I beat the guy, the looter. That was my first action. The second action was to do the encounter in the raider camp, and all that stuff happened. And now it's Draco's turn. Okay. So let's see, Draco wants to head over to Diamond City. And uh, he can almost do it, but not quite. And now to find out how strong this guy is, the Institute guy, we'll take a look at this chart. And since they're up here on level 1, we'll do it like this. And that means that the shield, that's the Institute, is an Y. That means he's ranged. And he, he's a level 2. We need to hit him in the body, he's arranged, that's what the Y means, and he has give some loot if we kill him, okay. So he's not aggressive, that's the main thing I wanted to check there, that means that Draco could move through his base without having to fight. Um, he could go 1, 2, 3, and he will be in Diamond City. Mm. But you know what, I think I think Draco will do an explore action, he will explore this tile first, see what it, what's down here. Oh, Red Rocket Station, okay. I like this exploring thing. Uh, even though a smaller complaint, that this is all the types that's in the game. So, <laughs> this is going to be the same thing coming up over and over. I, I, I hope they release expansions pretty fast for this. Anyway, that was Draco, he did that. Now he'll take two steps. I think, no, no, this comes up like this, by the way. This is a Raider uh, Psycho, okay. And Draco will take two steps. One, two, he's over at Red Rocket, okay. Now it's the end of the turn and we'll take a look at what the enemies will do. And the humans will activate the skull. Uh, or humans, they might be sins, who knows. Anyway, this means that this guy will flip up. He won't attack me though because his whole activation was just a flip up. This guy will go, and actually this happened first, this is the late, last thing that happens. But anyway, this guy uh, does, it's not ranged so he, he can't shoot Draco from over here. Otherwise it would, it would be a fight. But he will move into Draco's space. And he's aggressive, that means the Draco will have to fight him right away. So that was that. Okay, so Draco is fighting him right away. He's a 2, he needs to be hit in the body or in the legs. So here we go. And that's body, legs, body. Okay, so Draco takes him out, no problem. But Draco will take 2 times 2, he will take 4 hits to his health. So that's kind of rough. He's all the way down to 9 as well there. 
So he needs to rest and get some health back soon. But he killed this guy. That means that he'll get two experience and a loot. So let's see, two experience. Well, it won't be enough for him here, but he will go one, two, so there. And he will also get a loot card. Let's see what he gets. And that's a uh, paper, uh, magazine, the uh, Astoundingly Awesome Tales. When he camps, if he does not have L, he doesn't, he can discard this to gain 2 XP. That's nice, then I mean, he was going to camp anyway soon, right? Because he needs to recover some health, so that's good. Okay, so that was the enemy turn, and now we are back to our turns, and I'm the first player. Uh, let's see... Uh, I kind of want to head into Diamond City. If I want to go this way though, this takes two movement points because it's red, it's rough terrain. Um, do I want to do that? Um, mm -hmm. I could fight this regulator right here, just for the XP. I think I will do that because I have my laser rifle, so I'm pretty strong. Okay, so let's fight him. That's a fight action. He's a two, we need to hit him in the body or the legs. And I got body, body, body. Okay, no problem. So I'll heal him right away. I don't even need to reroll. I could have rerolled because of my weapon, but I don't need to. And he's dead. And uh, he'll do one hit to me, so that's two more. I'll lower my health here off camera by two, so I'm down to seven. Almost off camera, actually. <laughs> okay, and uh, he's dead. That means that I'll get two experience. And now I'll level up, so let's show you that. Here we go. One, two. I'll pull out two of these. Uh, tiles, and that's an L and a P. Uh, nothing to my weapon needs. Uh, my make weapons needs S, I, or A, so that won't help. So let's just take the P then. Power uh, perception. Okay, and I'll get one loot. Let's see what that is. And that's some junk. Uh, if during my turn I can discard this card and another junk to gain a card of my choice from the shop, which is over here, or from the uh, um, loot or shop discard piles. So I could, yeah, so basically some junk can turn into some items if I have two junk. Okay. So I kill him, I get the experience, I get the loot, and that is it. And now, let's see, since I kill him. Uh, yeah, 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 we'll pull out. Let's see, Draco did kill a human down here, so it's always easy to forget things. There should be a new inactive there, and I should get a new inactive there. So we, you shouldn't forget to, to uh, repopulate the map, or it will be really easy, because there won't be any enemies. So that was my first action. Now for my second action, I will move, I will just go one down here. I don't want to spend a cap to go two, because I have my power armor. I have to spend a cap every time I want to do a normal move. Now it's Draco's turn, Draco will, uh, let's see, he went to the red rocket station and he's going to want an encounter here. So he's going to go for an encounter, we'll pull out the card here and we'll see. And once again we cover it up like this, so I do it off camera so I don't spoil anything. So you hear nothing but your own footsteps as, as you walk through the ruins, it's calm and quiet. So Draco can hack into an old register. And if he chooses to do that, it's a test of I3. Now he doesn't have I, but he can still do the test. He needs to, and then he will roll all the dice. He will needs to get three of these uh, hit symbols. Then we don't care about the figure. Um, if he had the I though, he could have rerolled. That's how it works. Or he can search for useful equipment. That is a PL4. Then he needs four hits, but that's PL. He does have P, so he can reroll once. I think he will search. He will search for some equipment. So here, here we go. Come on, Draco. And that's two, three. He just needs one more hit. He can reroll because of the P. And that's another hit. And he has four. And he succeeded. Okay. And there's also a fail here. So if you don't succeed, something bad probably happens. Okay, succeed. You turn over some rubble to find a corpse. It stinks, but it has some useful items on it. He will get loot equals to... The times it says that is two, he will get two loot plus one, so he'll get three loot in total. And this doesn't have the trash on it, so this will go to the bottom of the encounter deck. We can encounter this again because it was really a generic encounter. And Draco gets three loot. That's good for him, he doesn't have that much stuff. So we got a fistful of cap. Immediately discard this card and get three caps. So that happens instantly. He'll get three bucks. Then he got the Colmex. 
uh, which is a drug, which is a bit weird. They should have been called, you know, what is it? What is it called in uh, the computer game? Chems. Yeah, chems. But they call drugs there. During a test or fight that uses P or A. Uh, okay, yeah. It does have P. Uh, exhaust to add one hit. Uh, and then after that, he has to test E3 to see if he becomes addicted. So it's a bit uh, dangerous to use these drugs. But he also found an iBot. Which is a uh, companion robot, uh, Rurko likes that. You can exhaust this during his turn. Until the end of your turn you may perform a non-fight actions as if you were in an in space adjacent to you. Uh, non-fight actions. Oh, so you can be like next to the Red Rocket Station and still do the encounter. That's interesting. Uh, if he's adjacent to an unexplored tile, he gets, gets to keep this companion when it unexhausts. Okay, so if he does this and he's in the border of an unexplored tile, okay. Well, he's going to keep, he's going to have that companion following him around, a little eye bot. So that was Draco's first mo thing he did. Um, and now I think Draco is going to do the camp action, so you can see how that works as well. So what happens then is that he will recover three health. Uh, if this was uh, exhausted, it would be unexhausted now, but it's not. Then he also gets to uh, discard this uh, magazine, because he doesn't have L, to get 2 XP. So he'll do that. Um, 2 XP for him is 1. Oh, this is a bit fiddly. But I like this system anyway with these things here. So 1 is leveling up, and 2 is going to the S. And let's see what he gets. So he got A and L. Uh, well, let's take A then, because the Carmex reacts with the A, so yeah, let's do the A there. So that was Draco's whole turn, and we're at the end of the round, and I will pull one card to see what the enemy will do. And the Institute will move, so this guy will go closer to Draco. And then the Super Mutants, or the, the Genetic Freaks, they will move. So this guy down here, he will move up like that. Okay, and now we're ready for a new round for ourselves, but I, I'm going to stop there. This is how the game goes. Uh, there's a lot happening. There's a lot. I don't want to spoil too much encounters and so on. So there's a lot happening in this game, of course. It's a really adventure game. Uh, it's, it's a sandbox. You go around, do whatever you want, and try to get, you know, get all these these points and so on. Uh, once this deck runs out, then we need to reshuffle it. Then I will pass it to Drac when he will become the first player. Also, when it, it runs out, both of these factions, whoever they are, depending on the scenario, will move up one step. So that's how the sort of timer for the game as well. When the, they get to the end, we will lose. If, if before that, any of us have the required amounts of points, it depends on how many players you are, you can, uh, on your turn or whatever, you can declare, I have the required amounts of points and you win. So this is a semi-cooperative, I mean, we can never fight each other, we can trade with each other even when we do the camp action, if we were uh, adjacent to each other. Um, so basically it's it's a very friendly game, uh, but it's like, it's sort of in the mix there between cooperative and, and a competitive game. And um, so basically none of us could win, uh, <laughs> the institute could win or whatever. Uh, or both of us can win, or one of us can win, uh, which is it's kind of cool. It's a bit different from most games that I play, so I actually enjoy that as well. So that is Fallout, and you know what? If you want to watch more of this, if you feel like this was too way too short of a run through, well, you know what? On Friday, depending on when you watch this, of course, but uh, on Friday, uh, which is let me see, let me think here, so uh, I don't mess this up. I've done it before, so I want to make sure. <laughs> uh, come on. Where's my calendar? Okay, Friday the 15th of December 2017. There's going to be co-op Friday, as usual, on Friday evenings. And we will play Fallout. I'll play solo and I will try to finish the whole game. We'll see how long it takes, but I will try to finish the whole game solo of uh, and, in, and another scenario so you can see something else. Uh, so if you want to watch more of this game, don't miss the Co-op Friday live stream on Friday the 15th of December. And I should mention the time as well. It's um, 6 Eastern Time, New York Time, or if you're in Sweden, that's midnight. Uh, 
between Friday and Saturday. So thank you so much for watching. I hope you have a great evening or morning or whatever you're watching. And don't forget to check out my Patreon account. I got some new rewards out. Check that out and please support the channel. You can click the link up there to go straight to it. Thank you so much for watching. Have a great evening or morning or whenever you're watching this. Take care. Bye bye. Be like Draco, follow Board Games with Niramas on Facebook, Twitter and Instagram. You can find us at BGW Niramas. Board Games with Niramas is sponsored by Alara Games in Sweden.